There is so much unfolding, so much going on. But what you have to understand is our government agencies now are pretty much entirely run by multinational corporations. That's not denied. And so you have to understand, the Central Intelligence Agency got c Congress three years ago. You can just type this into Google. You'll get the Washington Post reporting on it to change the law so the CIA could operate domestically in propaganda, including deception of the American people. And then I come out and say, look at the NFL of all these anti-cop halftime shows with Beyonce and her uh, running around with a baseball bat and she's mad at her husband, breaking car windshields and burning things down with young women watching approvingly. This is cultural destabilization, 101. So they had hundreds of publications come out and say, I was crazy, the CIA is not involved in domestic media. And then they had Stephen Colbert last night on late night, that he's taken over from David Letterman, come out and say, quote, this is all just in your face making fun of you folks, that he thinks Beyonce should be running the CIA, just randomly, just threw that in there. We're going to play that clip later. This is how stupid they think you are. Now, we're about to go to our guest. I just wanted to preface it with that, that, that we see them telling us, oh, we have a delegate process. Votes have never counted. That's ridiculous. They're trying to sell you on the idea that delegates aren't supposed to represent the votes from their precinct. And they've manufactured these super delegates out of thin air. They're trying to break our will, but it's not working. AP poll, Gallup polls, and others show between 6 and 8% approval for mainstream media, and it's only dropping. 6% last week in the AP poll. It was 8% a few months before that in Gallup. These people are less popular than scurvy on a ship or something. I mean, it, it, it is just amazing. These people are less popular than syphilis. But they sit up there and they just keep shoving lies, like Obama. I never said we wouldn't have boots on the ground in Syria. He said it 16 times. We played the clips. It's a new level of lies, and it's reached the Marie Antoinette level where they just say, let them eat cake. Why would they bring in the last three years five million people into Europe, a million just in the last six months or so, claiming it was a few hundred thousand here and there, and then suddenly, oh, it's been two, three, four, five million, hundreds of thousands here, cover it up and say it's a few thousand. Every high school in town, including my alma mater, has over 200 refugees from, quote, Syria, and the really Saudi and others. This is a Sunni invasion, a, 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 a Wahhabist invasion. On record into Syria, then into Turkey, who opens up a conduit all the way through Europe with Merkel and Halan and all the rest of them and the Swedish prime minister saying, come to me, come to me, and kicking old people out of their government housing and moving them. This is all confirmed. We've had our reporters over there in no-go zones in Paris and in Brussels, Belgium, where they would go 10 miles in any direction, and, and Muslims would just run out going, get out of here, screaming at them in, in French or English or, or Arabic. And... Biggs has been in a lot of combat. He heard him in Arabic saying, get out of here, infidel, infidel. He's got infidel in his arm, tattooed, freaking out on them. And then they go on TV and say, there's no no-go zones in the U.S. or in England. or in this, this is what's going on. Why would the establishment open a conduit up for the last three years, bring them in, let them come in? Judicial Watch got more documents. We went down there and found the mosque on the Texas border. That they've got sleeper cells coming over. We know this is going on. So the question is, why would our governments be doing this at a level where upwards of 80% they admit with the passports are military-age men? A lot of them brag on their Facebook and Twitters, hey, German ladies, I'm here. Here I was in combat in the, in the Free Syrian Army you know, a year ago. Why would you do that? It is a giant sleeper cell invasion. And I had the founder of Oathkeeper, Stuart Rhodes, on a few weeks ago, and he said, you need to get Matt Bracken on. He really knows what he's talking about. You should go read his articles. And I did read them, and just they're amazing. In fact, I want to start reposting them on Infowars.com and, 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 of course, linking to his side if he'd be gracious enough for us to do that uh, because it's very, very important. Tet Take Two, Islam's 2016 European Offensive, and he's the uh, author of Enemies Foreign and Domestic and a well-known advocate for Second Amendment rights. Uh, the following um, 
Guest essay by Bracken is also being published at Western Rifle Shooters Association. And he's also written another article dealing with uh, burning down the house in 2016. He sees war in the near future before a new president takes office. We're going to look at that coming up as well. But uh, enemiesfarinanddomestic.com, enemiesfarinanddomestic.com, and I'm not going to go over his whole bio. You can go there and see it, but a long career in the Navy SEALs, uh, going back into the 1980s, Beirut, you name it, just all over the world, uh, Panama Canal, it goes on and on, what he's seen. So he's actually been there, done that, um, witnessed how people infiltrate, both from the side of an infiltrator, someone trying to find the infiltrators, and he has really written some detailed breakdowns of what's happening. He's a self-described uh, freedom supporter, a constitutionalist who believes in uh, original intent of the Founding Fathers, of our country. He lives with his family in North Florida. So, Matt, thanks for coming on. Um, reading your essay, just studying history and, and what's happening, I can find no fault. And, of course, you bring your military background to it as well. Uh, a lot of folks respect your writing. Uh, you, you've heard what I've said in the last five minutes. W was that overall accurate? And what can you add uh, in an overall overview for folks in the next five minutes before we go to break? Okay, it's it's um perfect. Your byline of your website and your show there is a war for our minds, a battle going on for our minds. It doesn't matter if we're like monks in an Irish monastery discussing what's actually happening if the war for the minds is being lost at the at the at the mass level. We make fun of the North Koreans, you know, we we show them doing the wave in stadiums or you know swooning for dear leader. But look at Swedes. They've been brainwashed into actually hating themselves. But when they look at the mirror, they say, this blondness just has to go. We're so guilty of everything. Swedes. In America, I mean, the madness over transgender. I just saw a YouTube video um, on a college campus. The guy says, what if I want to be, if I, if I feel that I'm a six foot five Chinese woman? And everybody agrees, if that's what you feel, then we should respect you as a six foot five Chinese woman. So the, you can see how much work we have to do. I mean, the fact that after a century of communism, 100 million to 200 million killed under the social, various socialist banners, you have the young generation supporting this retread Bernie Sanders who honeymooned in Nicaragua and Soviet Union, um, Nicaragua during a revolutionary phase. I think this is an extremely dangerous time. I think that, it's, that 2016 is like a 1916 or 1787 or, or 1788. Another key turning, another key point events. in the pendulum. So, so a crossroads. A big crossroads. We're going to have the, the big Marxist breakout, especially, for example, if tr let's say Trump wins. There's no kinetic event like an assassination. All of these can happen. Massive riots like Watts, Ferguson, Baltimore, constantly. Imagine Cleveland on fire during the convention with armored personnel carriers all the way around the beltway. We see Beyonce and, and MTV priming the pump, and that's that's got to yes. be a directive from on top. Absolutely. that That's the, the narrative. So this is the war for the mines. And, and the, in Germany, they actually have a new word. Uh, I think it's Lugenpresse, but it means liar press. So they refer to that, the mainstream media, and I would include almost everything that you can turn on your cable channel, is more or less controlled media. They... Don't get out of certain boundaries. If, you know, if, if anything says uh, anywhere peripherally that this could be a conspiracy theory, they absolutely won't touch it. Oh, there's total Which scripting. There's total major scripting. conspiracies to come off. <laughs> exactly. Total scripting. So please continue, Matt. Well, I think that the, the biggest danger, we're going to have riots in this country, but in Europe, we're going to have an outbreak of Beslan, uh, uh, the Paris attacks, Brussels attacks. Something very significant happened during the, the Brussels attacks. And you have to understand that a government, a mass, a, a big organization has to have a communication structure. It's not like a one brain. It has, you know, many individuals. So you have to put a lot of credence in such things as the uh, security levels. They went from sec their maximum security level four back down to three within like 24 hours or 48 hours while terrorists were still on the loose because they were absolutely wiped out. Everybody worked the maximum of overtime. They were exhausted. They can't do it. They have to go home and sleep. Europe has no bench. I think the German army is like 50,000 troops, and they are unionized, and they won't work over 40 hours. And during NATO exercises, they just quit halfway because the union rep says, 
That's it. And we don't cross rivers after dark or whatever. So they have no bench. We're going to have an outbreak in Europe. It'll probably start with maybe a do uh, eight, 10, a dozen attacks widespread. The terrorists have learned the, the uh, utility of the synergistic effects of having attacks in various time, uh, places at the same time. It, we used to think of it as an Al-Qaeda signature, like the East, Arab, East um, Africa embassies um, being exploded on the same day. But it's more than that. It's a way to overwhelm the, the security system. And in Europe, that's going to be a big problem. Uh, at the same time that we're going to see these Bezlan-type attacks, we're going to see infrastructure attacks. Uh, and they'll probably do it on a holiday, like they did the Tet Offensive, knowing most of the security services are taking a well-earned break. Yeah, and, and it's it's not going to be like the Tet, the Tet in Vietnam, folks that remember that, where that was an actual uh, instruction orders had been assigned. We, that CIA completely missed it, or they might as well have missed it. If any messages were coming in from the field, they were disregarded. But they infiltrated 80,000 uh, VC fighters into cities. And then all on the same day, they went and grabbed AK-47s and satchel charges from caches and ran amok. It won't be like that in Europe. I'm not saying there are 80,000 guys with an order and you know to go on uh, Bastille Day. It's not going to be like that. But when there are, say, 10 attacks, like a, on a Bezna Bezlan or uh, Paris or Brussels level, that continues so that tomorrow there's another one and then there's somebody just you know, running amok with a knife. Rolling this, cascade attacks, uh, cells with no communication, almost no, impossible to it identify. Will self it will self-reinforce because the mindset is different. They will self-reinforce. Remember, in that religion, that ideology, a pimp, a drug pusher, he's not sinning. If he's selling this stuff to infidels, good for you, buddy. You know, you, you're really a sharp one. It's a perfect example um, to be evil. That's why they're so into gangsterism, right. raping women, sex with other but men. The, they call themselves, but, you know, these followers of Abraham. It's sick. But, the, but at the very last moment, you can spend your whole life a drug pusher and a pimp and running a discotheque for infidels. And you can undo that all, pull like a parachute. And straight to your 72 virgins. So Get out of jail party, free card. Smoke dope, party with infidels. You can't do enough good deeds, just like tithing extra or praying extra. There, it's impossible for that person, that sinner, to do enough good deeds if he lived to be 100 to go to heaven. But he can be the worst person in the world, pusher, pimp, armed robber. He goes straight to the 72 virgins if he kills some infidels. So it, it, that's why it will self-reinforce. When you see that the security services are completely overwhelmed, they're exhausted, there are no more, that then another school is, ta is ca taken down, how do you react to it? Especially if the guys are on a suicide mission where they want to just kill all the kids like in well, Bezla. Well, clearly, they're not uh, sir, I want to get into the details because you ran embassy security. I mean, you're one of the top experts on this, obviously. Matt Bracken, EnemiesFarnedDomestic.com is our guest. It's so important. I skipped this break. But, but specifically getting into big picture, talking about our elites, the leftist. I mean, I know they're reckless. I know they hate better clingers. I know they want to conquer the West. They see Christian uh, Judaic backgrounds uh, as, as not working in their new system. They want a cultureless plastic system. So they bring in the most radical uh, jihadis. Uh, tens of thousands Using of them, undoubtedly. Well, so, so here's the question. They start attacking. What are our governments thinking? Why are they doing this? Uh, what is the, I mean, I understand the mission of the jihadis. It's Cloward Piven. You were, you've been, you speak about it all the time, more, better than anybody. It's Cloward Piven. This is a, this is the Jacobins in 1788 plotting how to disrupt the grain market in France so that they can engineer food riots to overthrow the aristocracy. Okay, so I mean, with your Navy SEAL you know, uh, high-level background, you're not just a door kicker, but a guy involved in everything, uh, you know, conferring with my historical analysis and Lord Mox and everybody else, it's not our opinion, it's not that we agree, this is what's going on, how do we fight 21st century Jacobins allied with Islam, which strangely enough, towards what? the end, they allied with Islam uh, again 200 years ago. So these people never change. Sure. So how do we no. deal with them? Information war. Uh, <laughs> There is a war on for our minds, and the high ground is how do we leverage social media, access to mainstream media, books like the ones that I've written. My books are all about 
false narrative and getting people to see beyond. My first novel starts with a false flag attack into a stadium where a sniper precipitates a panic stampede, and it's sold in the media and by the government as a right-wing militia kook and a reason why we have to outlaw all semi-automatic weapons. It's uh, my books and my writing. It's about getting people to look beyond the curtain. Well, I want to read your books. I want to get you on a routine basis. I know Stuart Rose, all their folks that are in the know really respect you. And, and, uh, so, so, so let's go back briefly then, because I interrupt you. Let's talk about the Jacobins lead forward. You're talking about how they would engineer food riots, how they'd bring in societal crisis to get control. They're the proto-communists in the history books. That's what we're dealing with. So, so break that down. And then what the end game is, bringing in millions of jihadis. Well, yeah, the... The Jacobins said their motto was um, out of chaos order, but first they have to create the chaos. So they're not saying that it was just chaos in feudal Europe. They're saying we create chaos and from the, you have to, in other words, demolish a building, then build it back up with the bricks the way that you want them organized. You can't just go into a building and change a little few pipes and windows. You demolish it when it's atomized, the granular level, like Cambodia, uh, you know, uh, Poland in, the, in World War II. At that level, you can do anything. You can macro engineer. The trains can be running. The buses can be running. But you have to get the, pre, the we're in a pre-revolutionary state now, but they're going to pull out all the stops, especially if it looks like Trump is going to win. Certainly before he's inaugurated, we'll see a complete uh, go for broke scenario, both in Europe, which will be this major Muslim offensive. The end result of that will be a grand compromise, which is like half Sharia today. And as we know, that means three quarters Sharia in a generation, and you're in Yemen in two generations. In our country, we're, we're going to see a complete fragmenting of the um, society along racial lines primarily. It's going to be brutal. I call it Rwanda times Yugoslavia uh, uh, times, you know. Uh, it's this is the takedown of America. I totally this concur, and, 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 and I agree. The communists are activating. They're suddenly all over Austin with red yes. flags. They're smiling. They say the time of blood is here. They're activating their sleeper cells, and I would expect to see communists start carrying out terror attacks, and as you said, false flagging the false patriots. Flag. What do police departments do? What does the military do? Because they're going to be caught in the middle of this. Especially when terrorists, particularly in Europe, will see it first, because the, this... Islamic Tet is going to happen in Europe. It's going to be a huge wake up for us. It may lead to a landslide victory for Trump. Imagine something worse than 9-11 uh, in October. How does Hillary explain that? You know, people come in from Benghazi and blow up Rome. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's going to make Trump a sure victor if that happens. And then the, the left will say, this is our chance. We have to go for it. And there'll be street riots like between the uh, the communists and the National Socialists in Berlin, I expect to see shooting at some of these big demonstrations or explosions going off. Um, and in that way, the powers that be can say, uh, we, we need to um, put in a little bit of emergency conditions. Therefore, the uh, protests will have to be in separate safe zones 10 miles outside the Beltway at a designated FEMA camp or whatever they want to say. But we'll, we're going to see the um, freedom of assembly taken away. The, the, the key word, and that's almost like a code word, when you start hearing emergency, because they'll never say martial law. Those words will never come out of Obama, Jarrett, Michelle, that, that crowd. It'll be emergency. They'll say, during the present emergency, we can't afford uh, to have these mass demonstrations, which always lead to violence and, unfortunately, bombs going off and people shooting. So we have to put that in abeyance. Now, if there's a real takedown, the grid goes down, uh, before November, then there'll be no election. If there's no electricity, there's no election. Then we're automatically into an emergency situation. Um, another way that the communists can engineer this is to start a rumor, doesn't have to have any boots on the ground, just start a rumor, an internet rumor, that you know white racist crackers are planning to snipe at black folks lined up at the polling stations. Just a rumor, it's all it takes. You can even you know put up a fake YouTube if you want. You know, find something from 10 years ago somewhere else, recaption it as this happened yesterday, and it'll sound like, you know, rednecks are dragging blacks behind chains in Mississippi and shooting and threatening to shoot at blacks in polling stations. If that suppresses the black turnout, or even if it doesn't, they'll just say that it did, then they'll say that the election would have swung on that vote, which was suppressed by white violence. This is a narrative that will be completely sold by the mainstream media. 
Well, just like the, the, the burning black churches thing turned out to be totally right. fake, just like the uh, lacrosse team was fake, that was They'll all beta the testing, time. and they're just They'll launching the this everywhere. And we'll, we'll be on our own in our own parallel free media as long as we have it. Now, I, I wrote a short story called What I Saw at the Coup. I should, be, I should have finished a novel a couple years ago, but I, it's too important that I write these things, the short stuff that's on my, linked on my website. No, I agree. we got to get everything out now. Alas, Brave New Babylon, What I Saw at the Coup. The, the internet we can't take for granted. This is like right now our freedom fighter pipeline. YouTube, uh, Infowars. Got to use it now, folks. Use it, uh, it now. Yeah. If they, they're going to take it away. I heard from, from folks that, that were at a, at a law enforcement con, uh, on, uh, conclave that there's a lot of buzz about Facebook and how they're going to tune people down. Um, this, it, they're also doing their oh, information. Oh, yeah. First, they're going to start restricting. It's already begun. Stay there, Matt Bracken. This guy's 100% dead on from my research, so he can give us the other angle on it. He's going to come back and break down the different angles of how this can unfold and how we stop it, hopefully. We're on the march. The Empire. Folks better start praying. Run. I'll tell you right now. If everybody is praying, you're idiots. I can feel it in my gut. I can see it. We are. It's coming. It's here. There's two schools of thought. Um, one is they're gone. thing that's going to adjust their ideological uh, fixation is reality. All you people want to go to the street and complain, oh, they got shot by the cops, but you don't want to go to Chicago and say, we're killing each other in droves. Millions of people get murdered in the streets. Look at Mao Zedong. Look at V.I. Lenin. There's your case study of socialism. Uh, you're you're a white male. So? You're a white man. Are you kidding? Oh, Look, for everyone that's out there spinning their little uh, New Year's toy in, in your reporter's face, and I've watched those clips, and I'm horrified as somebody who believes in free speech and is an, is an artist, because those people are going to be coming for me. Let's face it, it may not be tomorrow, but it's soon enough, because I said the wrong thing on the wrong day because I was tired. Hey, that's not racist. I'm racist. That's not racist. I'm racist. The lack of tolerance of ideas and other points of view is the great Achilles heel of the social justice warrior movement. They do not apply their philosophical bent across the board equally. Plain and simple, this right here, nothing else, nothing else. Black, your skin color. It's never been great. You're all falsities. Well then, where are you going to... all falsities. Why don't you go live somewhere where it's better? Why don't I go somewhere that lives somewhere? I would love to. You want to pay for that? You want to pay for me to get the f*** out of this hole? No, you should, you should do it yourself. This place. You need no. to get out. Well, you need to get out. No, I don't. You need to get out. I actually don't. All right. Hey, you want to help me get this reporter out of here? Oh. I need some muscle over here. You don't have to go. Hey, this dude just. Hey, this dude just. I'm a trans. I am not against immigration or immigrants. Never was. My parents were immigrants. Against illegal immigrants is the same thing. So the people you've got to get through to is, is, is the people who I haven't, don't have the little red book yet, who do care about humanity and do care about free speech. And you have to get them to understand how their participation in those things. They're being inducted into a cult. Absolutely. And, and nobody wants to admit that they're being fooled. America can be great again. She must be free again. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Matt Bracken's our guest, enemiesforeignanddomestic.com. I want to read his books. In fact, I want to carry them. I haven't read them yet, but I'm told they're excellent. Uh, you know, nonfiction, and I guess some of them are fiction, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but what he's saying, I mean, the way he's breaking it down, and notice how much energy he's got, how concerned he is. 
I bet money when this guy isn't on air, he's not like that. But you start talking about this, there's no way you can't get animated and start just really connecting it to everything because it's scientific. It's a rollout. It's been done in other countries. It's been de beta tested in Europe. Europe's about a year, maybe two ahead of us. And I'm telling you, I'm going to see if he agrees with me. The way to try to back them off is if they think that it's absolutely going to fall flat on its face and that we know who's in charge of it, people like Soros, the globalist, their operatives inside the different agencies and the big banks, instead of their puppets, and we let them know we know the plan and the police and military do, which I know that's happening, and I've been a big critic of the police and, and the military carrying out bad operations, but they're some of the most awake people out there. So that's two separate issues that then... They may back off. The problem is that might actually scare them into doing it anyway. So we're kind of reaching a moment in history where things are collapsing. They've engineered it this way. But once you turn this thing loose, it's a juggernaut. I don't think they can put it back in the bottle. So all these collapses and organized revolutions that have been carried out by the globalists the last few years aren't going to come here. But you look at what they've done everywhere else, they're trying it here. The overthrow in Ukraine, the Arab Spring, run by the very same nasty people. I mean, the Legend James Bond movie, they admitted, was advised by MI6. And the Quantum Group is the name of George Soros's fund. And the bad guy who runs Spectre is the head of the Quantum Group. He's the guy that tried to crash the British pound. Even intelligence agencies are telling you who runs Spectre. So understand, Ian Fleming was MI6. This is... Art imitating life, not the other way around. And I have to say, one person is like a top general of this globalist crime syndicate. It's a Soros. But there's others even worse than him. And these are people that have bad will towards the West. I'm going to shut up now for Matt Bracken because I've been jumping in a lot. He's just laying out so much knowledge. Start wherever you want. Go wherever you want. Former Navy SEAL uh, involved in a lot of clandestine operations uh, all over the world. You can find out more at enemiesforeignanddomestic.com. Comes highly recommended, and I can tell why now, because I was unaware of this guy. There's so many great patriots out there. I know the patriots know who he is. I just get so busy covering news. And then, Matt, lay out this Tet Offensive, how you think we stop it. You've got the floor, my friend. Uh, I don't think we stop it. I think that the forces are in motion are like deep-sea tsunamis. The earthquakes already happened, and the waves are moving across the ocean. Um, there's going to be a convergence what people tend to do is look at each potential calamity in isolation and say, well, that's survivable. You know, the, if just a hurricane just hit New Orleans, that's survivable. But if you get, you know, 100 Katrinas that happen at the same time, the system is shocked. It goes into shock. Can't move. It can't save itself. Like somebody being shot once in the foot compared to being shot 20 times at once. Um, we're, we're going to have an overload to the system. Now, the plan might be for this Marxist takedown. There might I look at it like a pyramid, and you have at the very top some very few very evil people. And I think that there you could almost, depending on your religious persuasions, you could call them almost like a satanic influence or force. Below that, you have people that are also evil, but they really believe in communist revolution and that we're going to attain it. But we're, obviously we're not going to attain a communist revolution. We're armed to the teeth in this country. But we will have a massive civil war. But the Civil War won't be a geographic North-South Civil War. It's going to be a society tearing into itself Civil War, kind of in the way of, of uh, Bosnia, you know, where people all speak the same language, um, but they have different factions. In this country, there will be such a strong racial element that it's going to get out of control in a very ugly way. And at the, the problem is that there's no way to recoup the civilization. It's a very precious bubble floating that we're floating in, and we take it for granted. But our modern civilization is much more dangerous to ourselves than previous civilizations because, for example, um, calamities that happened to Europe, Black Death, uh, 30 Years War, Cromwell in Ireland, uh, events that killed a third of a population, say, in a generation. You could still just grow food on your own acre and survive. If you weren't our food, we don't grow it anymore. Our food comes from thousands of miles away. We all now are living in the equivalent of a glass bubble on Mars. And we don't see the glass bubble. We just think how pretty outer space is. But electricity has become our oxygen. And we're living under this false glass, artificial glass bubble. 
it's such a sy complex system now. It has to run perfectly like a, you know, like a Swiss I think I've, I got to interrupt. I think run. I found my new guru. Man, you or see it exactly like I do because that's how it is. If we have a collapse event, it will take hundreds of years to try to even get back, but the reactors will start melting down within right. a matter of months. I if mean, oh, Fukushima's, my God. If Sorry, go ahead. Just it might be the South. You, it might be like Argentina. You'll have to get to... You know, the north could be a, a, a nuclear wasteland, depending on, I don't really technically, I can't profess uh, any great knowledge about nuclear plant safety, but if the economy uh, locks up, if the grid goes down, something people need to understand. There are three parallel systems, like our nervous system, uh, muscular system, you know, bone structure. We have a financial system, an electrical grid, and a computer network system. If any one of those three is attacked really in depth, you know, recurring attacks, then all three collapse and our society collapses. You cannot, you know, if the financial system collapses, people can't get money out of the ATM, they loot the stores, game over. If the computer system collapses, the grid runs out of control, you know, uh, pipelines go open haywire all over the, collapse, all, game over. So any of those three collapse, Financial, uh, computer, global computer network, it's mostly Cisco hardware running over fiber optical cables, and the electrical grid, which we know that they, that, that Metcalf station attack out in California a year ago, looking at it from as a spec ops officer, that was a proof of concept test. That was a very professional thing. They had gone through in underground, cut optical trunks, did things to, so that the, there would be no uh, rapid response. Um, fired at these giant transformers, shut the thing down. That to me was a, a somebody showing somebody else that if we do this 20 times, we take down America. Proof of grid. concept. Proof of concept. And, and increase my budget because if I have 20 teams, if you budget me for 20 teams, the people I would be looking at would be foreign students. Uh, that's the way that you can cycle um, commandos in, into a country. They can come in, for, for example, for one year of being a student, and they can recon their whole area. They can come in another year as a student in another college and at the last minute be organized into a cell, take out these uh, these stations. For example, I just say, look, if, if Iran, just to pick on Iran here, if they're going to spend billions of dollars on a nuclear program, why wouldn't they spend a few million on a cheap kill grid takedown scenario just using commandos disguised as students? It's what we would do if we were smart and had that mindset. KGB used to plan that kind of thing, but how can we assume that we, that our grid is not going to be collapsed at some point, especially with these Marxists trying to do the big takedown between the conventions and the inauguration this is a time of maximum danger. I, I think of it as uh, 1917 in Russia or 1789 in France. And again, they want it to collapse, so they to, take over. But they can't take over. This is the thing. A plan, this is what I say a lot, a plan to ride a tiger is not the same as riding a tiger. Sure, that's why when Mao took over in China, you know, 40, 50 million people died in the first round. But And, and communism still didn't work, but it can wreck a society. And what I'm afraid is we're going to have in this country a wrecked society. Now, we have to hold on to the Bill of Rights no matter what, no matter who's put on the Supreme Court. They can say the moon is made out of green cheese. And that, you know, anybody that says they're a giraffe, you have to call them a giraffe. It won't make it reality. They can't take away our First or Second Amendment rights. If they try to, I don't care if they stack the deck with communists on the Supreme we Court. We have to defend every liberty at point blank range and promote because, it everywhere. Because we may not have this pipe, we may not have this means of communication. We could have our internet taken away. I, I wrote the short story. You can just look at these things on the internet called What I Saw at the Coup, where as the, the backdrop is a missile war in the Middle East that takes down our grid temporarily and our internet for longer. And during that period, troublemakers like us are quietly taken off the stage left because there's no way for anybody to know what's happening to anybody for that month. And then when the internet comes back on, it comes back on in a much more controlled way. And, and how this is going to go is they've already got the Commissars and the UN Strong Cities Initiative in every major city quote, advising the police, and so if the police go along with it, then the Justice Department doesn't come in and harass them and take over, and so they're already setting up these contacts during a collapse to have the commissars order the police 
and, and local security services led by federal leaders to go out and round up the patriots, the police and others just have to not follow those orders at the that's point right. that, plus, you really want that job trying to go yeah, round up the all plan. the veterans? That's the plan to ride the tiger. It's not the same as riding the tiger. In my first novel, the guys that actually shoot into the stadium on opening day of you know, that Washington FedEx football field, from a mile away, somebody rainbow arcs in some uh, uh, SKS rounds, causing a panic stampede. Now, these are just two ATF you know, mid-level executives that want to see the ATF's budget increase because it'll increase their power and prestige. They know that they're not going to wind up with America being disarmed. They know it'll lead to a civil war. They know people won't turn in their semi-automatic weapons. But they're happy to start a civil war if they're in charge of, like, one of the factions that's going to be very powerful. Crisis during. is our brand. Right. And, and we're going to see events spin completely out of control, particularly if, as I said, the financial system, you know, you look at, at um, Deutsche Bank and situations in Europe that are more dire even than with our Fed and, and our quantitative easing. Europe is in just as much of thin ice this pet breaks out. Nobody will be going to work for months. So what happens to the economy? The metros are closed. Every time a metro runs again, somebody jumps out and blows one up. Sure. No more well, metros. That's sure. how they get to work. And there's also going to be a move to round up all the Muslims in Europe and here because they're sleeper cells. You'll almost have to. But under the cover of that, then they'll have the precedent to round up everybody they want. And you can see uh, that as the kind of right-wing response being sold by former CIA directors and others. That's another program they've got cooking. So both the right-wing and left-wing elements of the power structure want the crisis because they all think they're going to battle each other inside the control grid for who gets control of the crisis yes. when they're unleashing something, as you've said properly, that is uncontrollable and will bring in meltdown worldwide that's probably not survivable. We have to somehow communicate with these different establishment groups and say, listen, your guy upstairs is probably Satan himself. Stop following these orders, I you lunatics. I don't think it can be turned off. I don't think that if George Soros had a con, you know conversion on the road to Damascus if George Soros turned into you know George Washington tomorrow and he said stop everybody turn around it, there's too much momentum it's now like giant boulders coming down the hill it's I agree with you unfortunately I agree with you these forces I agree with you but uh... we need to prepare for a grid down scenario in the next year because we're not going to have a Russian Revolution, a uh, French Revolution through Washington, D.C., and the power stays on. I promise you that in this chaos, even if engineers can't get to work because it's too dangerous because there's just people... Venezuela now doesn't have power, basically no refrigeration. All these other countries can't do it. Under communism and command and control, you don't get electricity or medicine, folks. But it's going to probably collapse before they get anywhere near establishing com a communist control. I understand, yes. Because they'll have a civil war. Like the Finns, people forget there was a war called the Winter War where little Finland actually beat the Soviet Union that rolled in thinking— There's a book well, on that, isn't it? Total Resistance? Yeah, and they, but they tangled with like a Switzerland. They walked right into a—they sent a bunch of res unmotivated reservists, conscripts, into a country like Switzerland— with a William Tell type of, you know, Marxist, uh, excuse me, Patriot. Marxman mentality, you know, Marxmanship culture. Isn't William it, Tell the archetype of the uh, of, of the rebel against tyranny, the true story of the guy that took yes. out all those people because they hurt his kids? That's right. And that's right. He was, he was uh, 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 you know, Charles Bronson, so to speak. Well, there's millions of Charles Bronsons in this country. And I have to tell you, some of the most dangerous Charles Bronsons I know are older than me. And they might have a bad cough or they can't ride their motorcycle anymore, but they, they, they're thinking, you know, when this happens, I'm, I'm not just going to go quietly. I'm going to make it, you know. I, I don't I think all the up. leftists that can barely wipe their noses realize that they're about to stick their hand on a badger hole. No, that's right. And, and forget about uh, AR-15s. The most common type of rifle is the, just the generic bolt-action deer rifle that can hit and kill a 200-pound mammal. At 400 yards. Remington 700. Millions. I shot millions here at 1,000 yards with a Remington 700. And the, and the most dangerous order of battle will be what I call the militia of one.
where just one guy doesn't tell anybody, not even his wife maybe. He just goes out, he goes to town with the rifle, he takes one shot, and that's it. I mean, look at the DC sniper situation. They got it totally wrong. They got the acoustics wrong. Stay there, stay there, Matt Bracken. Stay there, we're gonna talk about this. this is so important. Globalists are financing revolution all over the world. They're against the nation state. They play the countries off against each other. You know, that's like a James Bond movie. Well, that's because that's how it really works. And the worst element is the Anglo-American establishment. That's what they call themselves. There's nothing to do with being Anglo, but it's people that run England and the United States and a few other countries. It's the dominant force because it had the wealthiest, most open free market system to milk. And it is just running around all over the world, allied with radical Islam. And we have to get that narrative out of it. It's game over. I want to invite uh, Matt Bracken, who I got to say I'm extremely impressed with. Uh, I read some of his essays, thought they were excellent. Uh, but I tell you, uh, I absolutely click with what he's saying. It doesn't mean I agree with him. I totally agree with him, but it's not like I like him because I agree. It's because I know it's accurate, and everything he's saying, the way it pieces together, is exactly basically the way I've been seeing it. A lot of my other sources have been seeing it. And what's scary is it's like there's no doubt now. I mean, you can see this is the big one. Now, I hope and pray there's some way to avert this, push it back, whatever, but my gut is 50 times more concerned than it's ever been. I mean, I almost feel bad even being here on air, not getting, you know, dug in out in the countryside. Uh, but I realize I need to be on air as much as I can. I got a bunch of quick, short questions for you, Matt. You got to come back for like an hour and a half if you can next week or hell, even maybe tomorrow, part two or something, because I want to really flesh this out historically, get into your you know, military background and stuff as a guy that led, you know, SEALs, not just, uh, you know, out there uh, heroically doing a lot of this work, but clearly from your training, a lot of classified stuff, uh, I can see you've really been behind the curtain. Looking at this, though, just quick questions. The police aren't perfect. They've been militarized by the globalists, but they're more awake than the general public, I found. Clearly, there's a move to cause a civil war aimed at local government, kill the cops, kind of the army of one thing, but, you know, get every little thug to go shoot a cop in the back of the head. That's what Soros and the globalists have been pushing, clearly. What is their hope there, and shouldn't that then, and I've seen the police actually get it, shouldn't that be what we reach out to police with, that, hey, we're doing Overwatch, we want to work with you. This is here. You better get operational now to stop this because they need to be the front line with local government uh, to identify globalist operatives locally, you name it. So when all this goes down, they understand which side to be on. And I'm serious. I think that's absolutely key. What do you say? Yeah, there's a there's sort of a war within law enforcement that, you know, Stuart Road, Rhodes and the Oath Keepers are certainly right. We, we can't turn against the police. The police are going to be required to preserve civilization. Um, and they'll be completely, you know, they can't watch their backs as Stuart, the way that Stuart puts That's it. That's why the enemy's they, targeting the police. That's why people get mad at me that hate the cops because uh, the cops have done something bad to them. I get it. But the communists want to take them out. Get that, folks? Get that? Right. This is a Marxist takedown. And that we're in, this, we're in the stage, Lenin called it the worse the better. When they said, like, you know, there's food riots in Leningrad, he said the worse the better. You have to create those 1789... You know, bread riots. He said more Paris blood. He conditions. said more blood. Just kill, carnage, random, fear. And in this, and imagine, in the only, they didn't have electricity in 1789. They didn't have electricity in 1917. So the linchpins that you would pull out would be, say, the, the food factories that bring the bread to Leningrad. That train doesn't make it for a week. And now there's riots. Well, today, you don't do necessarily do bread. You go after the grid. You go after the computer system. You go, you go after the financial system. Then the bread stops. So in, in, in the absence of electricity, the computer network, and the financial system, our societies will implode. They, enemies don't need to fire a missile over a city. A missile comes with a return address. Mutual assured deterrence works. But who will know who hacked our computer grid? Who do we attack if our computer grid is hacked? It, maybe it's anonymous. Maybe it's the Koreans. It can be backtrailed through a third country. It could be an inside so, job. Obama could open the door to China. And it makes it much more likely to happen. The Cold War, mutual assured destruction worked during all the Cold War because every each, each you side knew where knew the missiles were coming from. But in, in this situation, if our financial system is hacked, if everybody's accounts just goes gibberish haywire and nobody can tr do a transaction, within a week, the, the grid will be down. The stores Matt Bracken, you're absolutely right. Five more minutes straight ahead, third hour. Tell everybody you know, tune in, folks. This is serious business. Thank you for listening to this is serious TV. business. I'm going to get this guy back on for two hours to take your calls next week if he can do it. He'll be back. Stay with us.
The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. I wrote that liner 19 years ago when my show got syndicated on Genesis. I was already syndicated on a smaller outfit. Because I just had General Benton Parton, former head of the Air Force, former head of Air Force Puppets Development, top anti-communist, and he had all the classified info. He ran the HARP program before that. And he said, it's a program, Alex, and they're going to take us over. First, they got to break us down. He had all the terms out of their own operations. And then once they'd done that, they would then take us over and exploit us against the next country. And so he basically said, in the you know, down the road, once they first seize the federal government and start collapsing things, you'll be basically deep behind enemy lines in your own country. So there I was 19 years ago writing that liner, hoping we could stave that off. Here we are, and they're trying to put it into place. Let me ask you this, Matt Bracken, and I hope you can come back for an hour and a half, two hours next week. Very impressed with your research. Enemiesforeignanddomestic.com to read his essays, get the books, everything. Clearly... I understand the world's going to turmoil, population, they've already flipped the switches where things aren't sustainable by design, hoping to ride that crisis in their own words. But looking at this, talking to other former Navy SEALs, uh, former spooks, other, you know, almost everybody I talk to that's been, you know, Delta Force, Green Berets, Navy SEALs, are all super smart, super cool, the best people you can imagine. They know everything I know and more. And then they still just go, yeah, but the public's too dumbed down. When you talk to all these other folks, what are they thinking? Are they all just trying to dig in for their own families as well? Or, I mean, you know, what do we do? There's a lot of digging in going on. Um, you know, I'm past the age when an active duty guy is still in duty. From the teams and from, you know, operational background are already like firearms and kind of survivalist mentality. Not all, but most of them. You know, if they don't hunt, they, they're still tactical. You know, they're always they're never in con, you know condition green so to speak you know you're always have that uh, sheepdog mentality going on and when it comes to your own, your own family you know you have to think about them first I mean I I can I tell people right off the bat what about water you know people want to talk about guns I say what about water I mean if, if how long does your city water go if the power goes down water food diesel. firearms friends and getting right with God they're all important that's right and and it's a and this is going to not be, you know, the normalcy bias. We grew up, there has always been electricity. It's just normal human nature to think, therefore, there will always be electricity. We're so domesticated. We're very domesticated. But the problem is, if our electricity is cut off even for a few weeks, we the, the, the big glass dome over us, our civilization, shatters in those weeks. Once the stores are looted, there's no restocking them. You know, you, you can't take a diesel part, engine apart and then here comes the zombie apocalypse and put it back together and get it running in a minute. Just I'm on sorry. time delivery means no stockpiles. No stockpiles. And when the 18 wheelers run out of fuel on the freeways and at the truck stops, you know, truck stops will be like a little feudal empire as long as their underground storage tanks are lasting and they've got generators. That's where you'll see all the state troopers at the truck stops. It'll be like the Alamo, last place with light in your county. But, Good um, God. I, oh, you no. Know, I, no. And I, you see the preparations get... by government digging in themselves. Yeah, and the people Why don't we just have... arrest George Soros and Obama and these damn people? Well, the, the people, it's too late. It, it, it's, the tsunami earthquakes already happened. And now no, we're I just totally agree. It's already been set in motion. So I guess we just get to high ground knowing the water's coming. 
and you try to warn people. You know, I, I'm willing to throw away all my credibility, such as it is. Um, I, you know, I wasn't career military. I'm not a big hero. I wasn't like all this stuff that um, it's the guys later after me that have been like in a war footing forever. Believe me. So I don't want to take that kind of credit where it's not. You were more clandestine stuff back then with the but seals, it, right? But it wasn't. I wasn't. I, I wasn't career, and, it, and I didn't do anything amazing. I was fortunate to be in SEAL Team. It's a wonderful thing. It was an early chapter in my life. But what I'm saying is there's going to be no escaping it. And we're like the kids at that beach. In His audio just cut out. Okay. Hold on, guys. His audio just cut out. So let's, 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 uh, can we get Stone on too? But I'm going to come back, finish up with him for 30 seconds or a minute. And if, or, or get him on phone because I don't want it to end like that. I was worried his audio just cut out. We'll be right back. Uh, or we'll get a phone comment from Matt Bracken, Enemies Foreign and Domestic.com. That was a powerful interview. That guy really knows what he's talking about. I'll take you in, truth. and I'll take care of you. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Side, the vicious snake. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Side, the vicious snake. Now she clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in, by now, you might have died. She stroked his pretty skin, and then she kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying thank you, that snake gave her a vicious bite. I saved you, cried the woman, and you bit me, heavens why. You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Oh, shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. They're intentionally leaving the borders open in Europe, bringing in mass refugees. Among them are going to be jihadists who are setting up a, a future Tet Offensive Tet style offensive in Europe. And the same thing's being done to this country. Ladies and gentlemen, we had Matt Bracken on earlier and his Skype failed at the end. We have two different Skype systems. And then our other one failed with Roger Stone at the same time. This is an example of how technology is great, but you can't completely depend on it, obviously. So we've got Roger Stone via video Skype, but audio via a phone. Going to Roger Stone here in just a moment.